Hey there, Torley Linden here, and in this video tutorial, I'm going to help you make sense of collaborating in Second Life, specifically meaning if you have something like this couch and you want a friend to be able to move it, or if you're doing a group build with other people, and how they can edit your objects if you selectively give them the permission to do that. So like I said, there's a couple basic ways, friends and groups. Let's have a look at groups first. So say I have this couch and I'm an awful furniture mover. I know it doesn't match the decor of the walls, but it's a very clear example. So if I right click and edit it, you'll notice that right here, and this goes for every object, I can set it to a group. You can go ahead and click set or to no group at all. But if you go to communicate window and in the groups tab, notice it says vidtuts. That means that I have this group activated. If you select a group and click the activate button, all the new objects you res, meaning create and bring into the world, will automatically have this group assigned. And that's a good thing if you want to have a lot of stuff you want other people to readily collaborate with you on. But not right now. I just want to do this one simple example. So let me close that out. And it's ready to the vidtuts group. And now I will just click share with group. This means that anyone else who is in that group, a member of the group, can now modify this object and move it around like I'll show you. So that's clicked, right? And then let's go over to, let's flip screens. And then here's Torley Tester. He's my friend. He's coming on in. Dun, 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 dun. He's coming to help me move the furniture. So you notice now that although this doesn't belong to Torley Tester in all his bipedal glory, he can still right click and he can edit it and he can go ahead and help me rearrange it. Like with the click the arrows, the green arrow there, or click the red arrow or the blue arrow to move it up and down. And that's a great thing if you have a friend with a good watchful eye. Make sure that you set share with group only if you want, to, if only if that's your intention. I know that sounds kind of obvious, but it's horrible if someone messes something up that was also in the group because you didn't intend to, to share it. And this means it's shared with everyone in the group. Just keep that in mind. So then I go back, I flip over back to Torley Linden's screen. You may wonder what deed does. Well, this means that an object becomes group owned. There are certain benefits to that, like certain vendor boxes that if you pay them, that everyone that is entitled to in the group per the role ability. See, I don't want to get too complex here, but let me just quickly show you this as well so you know, and I might explain this more in a future video tutorial, but deeding can get more complicated because you go to a group and then you get info on that group. And now let's look in members and roles. And you see that roles, different members can belong to different roles, meaning they have different permissions and abilities of what they can do. So in abilities, if you scroll down, there is this ability to, let's see, it should be down here, of being able to manipulate group own objects. That applies when an object is deeded to group. So if you want certain people to be able to move stuff and not others, then what you would do is you would deed those objects to a group, just click on it like that, and on top of that, you would give them the power to manipulate that. So that's just a quick example. Let me just close that out for now. And notice that share with group becomes unchecked because they're actually related, but they're distinct. They're not the same thing, okay? Like I said, I might do more of an explanation, but a simple way, short, if you create something, like if I go ahead and res a cube, just create and res a cube, notice it automatically gets set to vid toots, and I want to share it, I want Torley Tester to be able to move it, click share with group, and of course now he can go ahead and he can go ahead and do that. And notice that what he can also do is change the name of it, he can modify it. It acts in most respects as if it was his own, or her own, or its own. <laughs> Second Life is very flexible that way. There are some finer caveats with the permission system, but that's the general understanding. So now with that covered, let's look at the second thing, which is friends. That's another way you can collaborate. If you go up to communicate window, instead of the groups tab, let me just make this smaller here, go to the friends tab and you'll notice everyone who is your friend here, they will show up. And you will notice these give permission for friends to do different things. And if I specifically want a friend to be able to edit my objects, in most cases as if they were me, you click their name and you click this third checkbox, this column. But be very, very careful with this. If you don't trust someone, don't give it to them because they can delete your stuff, 
Remember, they can modify it. That means deleting, changing the color, screwing it up. But if it's a good friend, they can help you make something so much better. You'll get a warning. Notice that. And now, if I grant modify rights for Torley Linden, who is over here, and then yes, okay, you hear a ding ding. And on Torley Linden's screen, he's going to be notified. So your friend will be notified. They'll also be notified if you take away their permissions, if you revoke them. So now that I can close that as Torley Linden, that means that I can modify, as Torley Linden, I can modify Torley Tester stuff, but Torley Tester can't modify Torley Linden stuff automatically. It's a one-way thing, and how you grant it both ways is, again, from your perspective now, since I'm Torley Linden, go back to Communicate, and go to, let's see here, Friends, again, and Torley Tester, and this time, from my perspective, I will give Torley Tester my permission. Hmm, that's kind of weird. Actually, it should show this is checked because Torley Tester gave me permission. But let's see if this refreshes. Click that, and yes, so it works, goes both ways now. Let me see what happened with that Torley Tester. Hmm, well, that's a bit confusing, but in any case, you should be notified. This third, I mean, this fourth column here shows when other people gave you permission. And this one is selective. It means you can choose to make friends editors of your objects, as it were. So both of these guys can edit each other's objects. So if I play something out, like another cube in the wild, or actually, let me go ahead and modify this house, because this house here, Bilbo Baggins, <laughs> this nice Hobbiton house, belongs to Torley Linden. So now I am Torley Tester. You recall I flipped the screen like that. And I can right-click, and I can go ahead, and I can change the color of Middle Earth to a pink. I like pink or a green. And I know that's not to your taste, but just showing you an example, and of course I can move it and change it other ways. I can also drag stuff into the contents if I wish. Key thing, if you're not able to edit something, always check in the general tab. Always check the next owner permissions. Because if it doesn't say you can modify if that's not checked, then no, you, you can't touch that. You can't touch it. Da, 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 da. But in this case, I can copy and I can modify it, just like it says right there. But the thing is, I can't resell or give it away. So just keep that in mind. Permissions, permissions, permissions. You may notice also on a side note, this is slightly more advanced that I have this extra display of more advanced permissions here. This is done through the advanced menu. I should get into that another time. There's a lot you can do. But long story short, that's how you basically allow a friend to collaborate with you. Now I'm going to flip back to Torley Linden's screen because there's a couple brief things which are also helpful. Let me go ahead and edit my house again, Hobbiton. And if you want someone to be able to move anyone, not just a group member or a friend, then you can click this and allow anyone to copy. This will only work if all the, op all the permissions are fully permissive, meaning you can copy, you can modify, and you can transfer it. So that's grayed out because I can't do that because I can't transfer this away. But that's just very handy to know in any case. So go ahead and have a look at those different sorts of things when you're building with friends. Remember, at any time, if you feel uncomfortable, you can go to communicate and you can revoke permissions like that. And it'll just tell you that. And no harm done, no offense meant, but you can just take away permissions just like that. That's pretty cool, eh? Well, yeah, you notice, let's see here. And we'll flip screens one more time. And that's what it says. So Torley Tester's going to head out. He's had a fun time briefly being here as a guest and repositioning Torley Linden's couch. And to all of you, to each of you watching this video tutorial, thanks for joining me on this adventure and use these tips to build better with friends. 